Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to the Rugby Village for inviting me along to this fantastic spot, Singapore, uh, which is the start of your uh, celebrations all the way up to the Rugby World Cup. Uh, thanks for that introduction. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you meant well. <laughs> and can I, first of all, before I go into my speech, put a couple of little facts straight? <laughs> we did not invade Falklands. We just fucking reclaimed it back, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing, Mr. K didn't lay me out. We wrestled each other to the floor. That's the next thing. But it is great to come. And obviously, we know there's a, a, a Kiwis. And forget what Simon says. I like the Kiwis. Um, and we got the Australians. We got some South Africans in the room, I know. But uh, I'm a very much a Northern Hemisphere guy, as you can probably tell by my shape and my accent. Is there any Brits in the room? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's what we like to fucking in here. <laughs> that's what we like to hear. Can I say, it's a great honour honor to be here, and thank you very much uh, uh, for inviting me here. And I make no bones to talk about, I'm an, I'm an old England has-been. And uh, for me, talking about World Cups, I played in the first one in 87. And we've made a couple of finals since England. But since then, really, apart from 2003, and in fact, the Northern Hemisphere have only won it once, 2003. So I, I make no bones about talking about that lovely damp day in Sydney. <laughs> Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, I was there in that 2003 World Cup, not as a player. I signed up for two months. I signed up with BBC Radio 5 Live commentary team. I was there doing some television, and I was there with a sports travel company. In fact, I tell a lie, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't stay for two months in Australia. I stayed an extra couple of weeks to make it two and a half months. I felt I needed time to gloat. Um, <laughs> because, quite rightly so, when do England win World Cups? 66 World Cup football, we still talk about it now, quite rightly so. The Ashes last year made us feel pretty good as well. <laughs> but obviously in Union, it's only the one 2003. And do you know, ladies and gentlemen, you'll all remember how England won that World Cup. It was Johnny Wilkinson's drop goal, dying seconds of injury time. And in England, especially in Britain, people say, where were you? Where were you when Wilkinson's kick went through the post? I'll tell you where I was, ladies and gentlemen. I was in a small open air studio on top of the stand doing Australian television. What a result! <laughs> and, and as the kick's gone through the post to fulfill a dream for me, to win their only Rugby World Cup, I'm in the middle of this studio. And on the right hand side of me, I had the one and only. Six foot six World Cup winning captain for Australia, the legendary John Eels was on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, the finest centre I've ever seen in Australia, the magical Tim Horn was there. So who you imagine, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> As the kick's gone through the post to win England their one and only World Cup, I'm in the middle of these two great Australian athletes. I was there. I was bald. I was fat. But I was fucking English.